chest melt towards the floor. And as you're here, begin to take note of your breath. Just be present with the inhale and present with the exhale. As well as the spaces in between the two. like to set an intention for the next hour. You can take this time to do that. Maybe a goal or an affirmation or a purpose. And then when you have that, let that carry you through the practice this morning. over to the left long edge of your mat. Keep the hips as they are. Create length along the right side of your body. And as you breathe in, breathe into your right side. Create length and sensation there. Inhale, bring your hands back through the center. And then exhale, take them to the other side of your mat now, creating length from the other side of your body. So breathe into this space now. Take note of any sensations, any feelings that might come up. And be present with them. More breaths here. And when you're ready, come back through the middle. Just pause for a moment here in the center. Take note of how your body feels in this moment. And the next time you breathe in, shift your weight up and forward onto the hands and knees. Make any adjustments that you need to when getting here. And we'll just take note of the anatomy for a moment. So make sure that the wrists are under the elbows, elbows under the shoulders, knees under the hips. And we'll say good morning to the spine. As you breathe in, drop the belly toward the floor, lift the chin, lift the gaze. And then exhale, reverse that motion, chin to chest, spine to ceiling. Inhale, bring it back through. Lift the gaze. 
Exhale, chin to chest. And keep going a few more times at your own pace. Stopping anywhere along the way that you see fit. Next time you come through the center, stay there. From here, begin to spread your fingers out even wider than they were before, really root into the mat. And then let the shoulders just creep up to the ears. So you're keeping the arms straight, but you're just letting the shoulders really sink into your ears. And what this is doing, this is bringing your shoulder blades together. Then keep the arms as they are, just bring the shoulders away from the ears. You're separating your shoulder blades. So you're sinking, bringing them together, and then lifting, bringing them apart. Call these scapular push-ups. And we're just going to keep doing these for a few more times, really going slow and methodical through the movement. Maybe link your breath with the movement here. So perhaps you inhale as you lift, and you exhale as you sink. Inhale as you lift, exhale as you sink. And next time you're lifted, stay there so the shoulders are away from the ears. Tuck the toes into the mat, and then when you're ready, lift the knees off the ground just an inch or so, so that they're coming to a hover. And you might notice sort of instant activation with your arms, your core, your legs. That's okay. Just be present with that. Take a big inhale. And then on the exhale, drop the knees, uncurl the toes, send the hips back, find another child's pose. So see how this feels now, that you've done a little bit of movement. How does your breath feel? Next time you breathe in, once again, come up onto the hands and knees, find this tabletop shape. And from here, we'll just extend the left leg back behind you, curl the left toes under, press the hands into the mat to just sort of extend the back of the left leg so that you're pushing the left heel towards the back of the mat. Good. We're inviting length here into the back of the left leg, turning into your calf, your hamstring, and then we'll switch. So bring the left leg back under you and then curl the, left, uh, the right toes under as you extend the right leg back behind you. Maybe move forward and back if you'd like. Bring the leg back under you. This time we'll curl the toes under like we did before, lift the knees to a hover, also like we did before, and then we'll just begin to shift the hips back, but the knees are still going to be lifted. So you're sort of in this, uh, I don't know what you would call this, but you're in this contracted shape here with the chest toward the thighs, your fingers are still spread out wide, the legs have a deep bend into them. And then we'll begin to extend the legs and just tiptoe the feet forward, so that you eventually are folding forward over your legs at the top of your mat. Allow the head to hang heavy, maybe grab opposite elbows and just sway the upper body side to side. There's lots of things you can do with your hands here. Perhaps interlace them at your low back and extend the knuckles towards the ceiling. Maybe shake your head yes, shake your head no. Wherever you are, bring the hands back 
down towards the floor and very slowly on your next inhale, come up to stand one vertebra at a time. Your chin will lift last, bring your shoulders back and down at the top. And we'll just start again standing here with some shoulder rolls. So inhale, bring your shoulders up to the ears. Exhale, drop them down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Switch directions now, go at your own pace with your own breath. Next time you're at the bottom, stay there. Inhale the arms out and up towards the ceiling. You can uh, interlace your fingers and extend your index fingers towards the ceiling. Grow nice and tall on the spine and the legs. Take a big inhale. On the exhale, take the hands over to the right, press the hips to the left. So we've been in this sensation before when we were in child's pose, but now we're standing. And now it might be a little bit more active. Don't hold the breath, keep the ears in between the biceps, and then inhale, come back through the center. Exhale, take the hands to the other side, now press the hips to the right. Inhale through the center. Look up at your hands. You can keep your hands here or take them to your low back. I'm going to take mine from my low back this morning. You begin to press the hips forward, lift the chest, lift the chin, lift the gaze, come into a slight back bone here. And then when you're ready, we'll reverse that motion, bring your hips back over your shoulders, fold forward over your legs. So we'll turn this into a few rounds of the sun salutation A. Breathe in, take the hands to the shins, lengthen your back. Breathe out, fold forward. Plant your hands on the floor, step the left foot back, step the right foot to meet it, find a high plank. And from here, drop the knees to the ground, drop the pelvis, the stomach, the chin, come onto the tops of the feet, inhale, lift the upper body. Cobra. As you breathe out, curl the toes under, bring the hips back and then up, lengthen the legs, find a first downward facing dog. So you can bring some movement here if you'd like, maybe bend one leg and straighten another, cut a lot of feet, keep the fingers spread out wide, keep the ears in line with the upper arms. And then we'll just begin to tiptoe the feet forward so that they return at the top of your mat, folding forward. Inhale, lift up halfway, hands to shins. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, come all the way to the top. Hands out and up. Palms touch, thumbs in your chest. We'll do that again. So inhale, take the hands up. Exhale, fold forward. Breathe in and take the hands to your shins. Breathe out and fold. Plant the hands and step the right foot back. Step the left foot to meet it. Find a high plank. Drop the knees, drop the hips, drop the stomach. Lift up, cobra as you breathe in. Lower down, curl the toes under. Downward facing dog as you breathe out. So if you want to take some movement here, you can, but otherwise we'll work on bringing ourselves to stillness for just a few breaths. You're driving the heels towards the floor, but you don't have to touch the floor. You're just finding length along the backs of your legs. You're bringing the navel in and up, and you're extending the hips skyward. Do that once again when you're ready. We'll tiptoe the feet forward, folding forward over your legs at the top of the mat. Inhale, hands to shins. Lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. Arms out and up. Palms up to the top. Thumbs out your chest. Good. I begin to pick up the pace just a little bit. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. This time, step both feet back, find a high plank. You can take that transition if you'd like with the knees going down, or you can begin to bend the arms so that you lower the body in unison, and then come up into an upward-facing dog or cobra. 
And then as you breathe out, shift the hips back up, find a downward dog. Good. From this down dog, glide the weight forward into a high plank. So we're just shifting the hips back down. And then exhale, send the hips back up. Inhale, glide the weight forward, high plank. Exhale, send the hips back. Good. Hold this here for two more rounds of breath. And then tiptoe the feet forward, fold forward over your legs. Hands to shins on the in breath, fold forward on the out breath. Good. Then the legs come all the way up to stand, take the arms out and up, and the palms together at the top, and the thumbs into the chest. Look down at your feet and separate the feet so that they are hips width apart. Keep the knees about the same distance apart as well. And then as you breathe out, bend the legs and send the tailbone back and down. So here there's a simultaneous movement of pressing your hips back, but also slightly tucking your tailbone, bending the legs and using your legs to hold this shape. This is chair. It's like you're sitting in a chair. That's the name. And there's a lot of fun we can have with this. Maybe begin to pulse up and down, tiny movements here, waking up the thighs. Next time you're low, if you are pulsing, stay low. And we're going to be here for a few breaths. So really work on how this feels, right? It might not be pleasant. But you definitely feel something. Sensation is happening. Let it happen. Anchor yourself to your breath as a way to guide you through this pose. Notice the air coming into your body as you breathe in. Notice it leave your body as you breathe out. Bend your legs a little bit more. Take a big inhale. Exhale, straighten them and fold forward. Shake it out if you want, bend one leg, lengthen another. And then when you're ready, inhale, hands to shins, lengthen your back. Exhale, fold. Plant both hands and step or hop your feet back now. Find your transition to a downward dog. So maybe it's just going straight there, or maybe you go through your own little vinyasa. Inhaling and lifting up into upward facing, exhaling, downward facing. From here, lift the left leg into the air. And work on keeping the hips square, so maybe dial the left pinky toe toward the floor while you're still lifting the leg. And then bring the left foot all the way through, planting in between your hands. Find this low lunge of sorts. So your hands are framing the left foot. Your left knee is over the left foot. You can drop the back knee on the ground if you'd like, but if you want to keep an element of challenge, if you will, lift the upper body so that your torso comes uh, perpendicular to the floor. Take your hands to your hips. So with your hands on your hips, maybe you just work on keeping the hips square, right? So the left hip is coming back a little bit, the right hip is coming forward a little bit. The back of the right knee is pressed open towards the ceiling. Staying here in the legs, you can keep the hands on the hips if you like, or take them out and up, palms together at the top. If this is enough for you, you can stay here. Maybe take the gaze up to the hands if you want to add a little bit of balance. But wherever you are along the way, it's perfectly fine. Breathe in. 
As you breathe out, lower the hands to frame the left foot. Plant the hands on the ground. Send the left foot back to meet the right. Find a high plank. Bend the arms to lower your body toward the floor. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good. We have two sides, so lift the right leg when you're ready. Dial the right pinky toe toward the floor, so we're keeping the hips level. And then from here, bring the right foot through, plant it in between your hands. So find your footing first. We're in that lunge of sorts. The hands are framing the right foot. The right knee is over the right foot. The left knee can come down on the mat if you like, but if you also want to add a little bit more, come up right, take the hands to the hips. So the navel is drawn in towards the spine, bringing the left hip slightly forward, the right hip slightly back, press the back of the left knee towards the ceiling. You can stay here with the hands on the hips, or take them out and up like before. If you want to add a little bit of the balance challenge, you can take the gaze up towards the thumbs. Inhale. Exhale, lower the hands down to frame the right foot. Send the right leg back to meet the left. Find your movement to a downward dog. And then from here, tiptoe the feet forward so that eventually you will come at the top of your mat, holding forward. Shake the head yes, shake the head no. And then slowly we'll come up one vertebra at a time. Just let the arms hang heavy as you come up. Allow the shoulders to go back and down as you get to the top and then the chin knots. Good. Take the arms out and up. Bring the palms together at the top and thumbs in your chest. Take a look down at your feet and bring the feet to touch each other now. Bring the knees to touch each other. If that's uncomfortable for the bone on bone, you can keep very slightly apart. We'll go back into chair, this time just put the legs closer together. So the hips are going to go back and down, the legs are going to bend. And I invite you to be present with whatever is happening here. You're more than welcome to stay here, but I'm going to offer a twist by taking the left elbow to the outside of the right knee. So just twisting the upper body so that you can use the elbow against the knee as leverage to twist the upper body over to your right. Inhale, bring the hands through the center. Exhale, twist to the other direction. So now the right elbow is to the outside of the left knee. Using that to twist the body over to the left. Hello, legs. Good. Come back through the middle. Bend the legs a little bit more. You can do hard things. My legs are shaking. Shaking is good. Exhale, straighten them and fold forward. Good. Breathe in, hands to shins, lengthen your back. Breathe out, fold forward. Plant the hands and step or hop the feet back. Bend the arms, lower the body down. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Take five breaths here. Keep the fingers spread out nice and wide. Navel in and up. What's happening now? And the 
the spine press or a complete lift the left leg into the air. This time we will open the hip, so bend the knee, stack the knee over the hip, and perhaps just draw some circles or big ovals with the knee that's in the air. We're working through the movement of the hip joint. Perhaps you can even look under your right armpit and see your left foot. And then when you're ready, bring that foot all the way through. Plant it in between your hands, and we'll just go straight into a high lunge from here. So the arms will be extended up, fingertips towards the ceiling. Keep your navel in towards your spine as you do this. And then exhale, come on to the bottom of your right foot. We'll open up into a warrior two, facing the right long edge of your mat. So find your footing here. See if you can get your left heel to be in line with the arch of your right foot. You're opening your left knee towards the back of your, your mat off to your left. Fingers extended in opposite directions. Put the front palm, inhale, lift the left arm up. Lengthen the left side of your body. And then exhale, take the left elbow or the left forearm to the near thigh, lift the right arm up. But to staying there in the legs, we'll just go through these two movements. Inhale, lift the left arm. Exhale, lower the left arm, lift the right. One more time, stay nice and sturdy in the legs. Inhale, lift the left arm. Exhale, lower the left, lift the right. Good. Take a look down at your left foot. Lift the right heel as you lower the right hand down to the inside of the left foot. Lift the left arm up. So it's going to a twisted lunge here. And then lower the left hand to frame the left foot. Send the left foot back. Find your movement to a downward dog. And once we're there, the right leg will lift. Bend the right knee, stack the right knee over the right hip, and draw circles or ovals with the right hand. And perhaps you can look under the left arm and see the right foot. And from here, bring the right foot all the way through, plant in between your hands. Inhale, lift up into a high lunge. The next time you breathe out, open the hands, find the warrior two, facing the other direction now. Keep the shoulders down and away from your ears. Imagine two people pulling your fingers in opposite directions so that your torso is perfectly vertical over your back. Lift the right palm, inhale, lift the right arm up, slide the left arm back to the left leg. Exhale, right arm down, the left arm. Keep a nice bend in the right leg. And then we'll switch. So inhale, lift the right arm up, lengthen the right side. And exhale, lift the left arm up. Keep the right arm down, the left arm up. Keep the right arm up. Do that two more times. Inhale, lift. Reverse the warrior. Exhale, come forward. Left arm up, right arm down. One more time. Reach back with the right arm. And then come down. Take the left arm up. And gaze comes down toward the right foot. Drop the left arm down. Lift the left heel. We'll just twist the lunge for a moment. Bring the right arm up. Good. From here, lower the foot, lower, lower the hand rather. Send the right foot back to meet the left. Find your movement once again. Take another five breaths here. Tune in to your body and your body alone. Bye.
Alright, so it's done. Bend the legs, take the gaze in between the thumbs and step or hop the feet forward. Folding forward once again. Inhale, hands to shins, lengthen your back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise, take the arms out and up this time with you. Palms punch at the top, palms under the chest. Take a look down at the feet. We'll do one more chair pose. This time, take the feet underneath the hips. Knees about the same distance apart. You can take a typical chair, just with your feet flat on the ground, or you can lift the heels off the floor, coming onto the balls of your feet. Your choice, you're still getting the uh, benefit of this pose, no matter which one you decide to do. If the heels are lifted, then begin to bend the legs, keeping the balls of the feet on the ground. If the feet are flat on the ground, you can just find your typical chair pose. Notice the nature of your breath as you're in this shape. Whenever you are, stay there for three more breaths. And this time we'll inhale from all the way to stand, take your hands all the way up to the ceiling. With the right hand, grab the left wrist, and then exhale, take the hands over to the left, or to the right, rather, next to the left. Good, inhale, come all the way up, switch your grip, now the left hand grabs the right wrist, take the hands over to the left, hips to the right. And come through the middle, hands can stay up, or once again to the low back, as you press the hips forward, lift the chest, open the heart, lift the chin, Perhaps you go a little bit deeper now than you did before. Or not. It's up to you. Bring your hips back under the shoulders. As you breathe out, fold forward over your legs. And what's happening now? Slowly lift yourself to stand, keep the arms heavy and dangling down toward the floor. Chin at the chest. And when you get all the way to the top, lift the chin. So we'll finish our standing portion of today with a little bit of balance, working on standing bow. So if you'd like, just uh, there's two uh, versions of this that I'll offer. The first one will just be having the left arm up side and then bend the right leg, grab the right foot with your right hand, and inside with the right foot. So this is that first version right here. You're more than welcome to just work on this. This is a pose in and of itself, right? We're working on not letting the hips come out to the left side, really root into the left foot with the left arm lifted. If you have a wall nearby and you need that for assistance, you're more than welcome to go grab that. Try to keep the right knee in towards the left knee. It doesn't have to touch the left knee. But just don't let it hang out off to the side. So if this is enough for you, you're more than welcome to park it here. This is perfectly fine. You will feel this after a few breaths. If you want to take it a little bit further, you can begin to hinge forward at the hips, taking the left arm forward as you simultaneously kick the right leg up and back behind you. Sometimes it helps to find a place to stare. It's not moving. Direct your gaze to your street. Keep the breath flowing in and out. Two more breaths. Back up, lift the hand, release the foot, lower the hand, shake it out. Do some shoulder rolls, shake your legs. And we have 
one more side. So just to start, take the right arm up, open the left arm out to your side, bend the left leg and grab the inside of your left foot now. Maybe you just work on this, making sure that the right hip doesn't come out to the side. Keep the left knee in towards the right knee. If you'd like to add a little spice, begin to tip forward as you kick the left foot back. Try not to grip the toes on the mat. Try to lift the left knee into the air. Be mindful of your left shoulder. I'm going to hurt that. Keep your chest open. Keep the breath flowing. Do more breaths. You can do hard things. Good. Come all the way up. Release the foot. Shake it out. How are we feeling? Good. Alright, so we'll work our way onto the floor now. Take the arms out and up. And as you breathe out, fold forward over the legs. Inhale, lift up one more time, hands to shins. Exhale, fold forward. Plant the hands and step both feet back. Find a high plank. We're just going to stay in the high plank for a few breaths. Give some attention to our core. Allow the navel to come in and up. Keep the shoulder blades spread out wide, just like we did at the beginning. From here, drop the knees to the floor, drop the hips to the floor, and the stomach, and the head. Just come onto the right cheek for a moment. Keep the hands under your shoulders. Just feel the body here landing on your stomach. Feel the mat supporting you. Feel the floor supporting the mat. The earth supporting the floor. And then with the hands underneath the shoulders, spread the fingers out wide. Bring the elbows into the sides. So the elbows aren't falling off to the right and left. They're in tucked in tight at your sides. Tops of the feet are in the floor. Bring your chin to the mat. Inhale, press up into a cobra shape. So we're not going to lock out the arms, we're not going to keep the arms straight, we're going to keep a bend in the arms, we're going to keep the elbows into the sides, and we're going to engage the low back, so we're not only using the arms to hold this. The low back is engaged, the collarbones are spread out wide. And then lower the body back down, take the other cheek to the floor this time. Go back into that shape one more time. And you're spread out all right, changing the mat, elbows tucked in, and you're ready to press up and lift. This time we'll just take the arms down by your sides, palms face up, the shoulders just droop toward the floor. Bend the legs so that the feet are pointed towards the ceiling, and then just winch the wiper the legs side to side. Over to the right, and then over to the left. Bring them back through the middle, keep them there, and then lower the feet down. Hands under the shoulders, press into the earth to lift yourself up. Find a child's pose. 
hips towards the heels. for a few more rounds of breath. And next time you inhale, just begin to shift your weight up, bring the hands towards the knees, so we're sort of in this kneeling position. And then we'll lift up onto the knees so that we're on our knees and our shins. From here, we're going to work into a little bit of a, a back bend for your camel. So the knees are going to be under the hips, the hands are going to be at your low back, fingers pointing down. And this can be a very uh, sensation filled pose, so take it slowly. It is nice and early in the morning, so just be mindful of your spine here. We're going to press the hips forward using your hands to support at the low back. Let the chin fall to the chest first as you press the hips forward. When you get to the point where you don't want to press your hips forward anymore, then begin to lift the chin. Spread the collarbones out wide. Lift the gaze. Open the heart. So the hips are as close to as over the knees as possible. They don't have to be directly over the knees. Hands can stay here or lower down to the heels for extra support. Extra opening. Very tempting to hold the breath here. Try to resist that sensation. And very slowly and mindfully with control. Come up one hand at a time if you need to, bring the hands to the low back, and we'll just sit the hips back down and we'll return to a child's pose. Be very slow as you do this because your back just had a lot done to it. And just wiggle the hips side to side. work our way up and onto our seats. So extend the legs out long in front of you. Make sure that you're on your sits bones. The torso is nice and tall. There's some integrity in the chest, sort of this perpendicular shape between the mat and your upper body. Take the arms out and up. Exhale, just fold forward over your legs. Come around the back here and let the head rest heavy. Maybe if your feet aren't accessible, you could take hold of the ankles or the shins. Inhale, lift yourself up. We're going to do that one more time, but we're going to add a little bit to it by bending the legs first. And take your peace fingers and wrap them around your big toes. So here, let the knees come in between the arms if that's accessible, and let the thighs come right up against the chest and the belly. So here, we're going to keep this grip with our hands, and we're going to keep the uh, connection between your upper body and your thighs as we just peel the feet forward. You might not go very far. I'm not going to be able to go very far. Just working on keeping that connection with the upper body on the legs and keeping the connection with the hands on the toes. And when you can't go there anymore, just pause for a moment. 
I have a deep bend in my legs right now, and that's okay. And then from here, you can let the connection between the thighs and chest go, but keep the grip in the fingers if that's possible. And release the grip, lift yourself up. And hands to your sides and just scoop yourself forward so you have enough room to come onto your back. Keep the legs bent, the knees are pointed up towards the ceiling. Left leg stays where it is, we're going to take a figure four with the right leg lifted and the recline pigeon, if you will. So the right leg's going to come up and over, the right heel is going to come near the left knee. There's this little hole that's going to be created in between your legs. Reach through that with your right hand, connect the right hand with the left hand, either in front of the left shin or behind the left calf. Flex the right toes, maybe even do some circles with your ankles. It sometimes feel good. One more breath. And switch. Right leg coming back over, left foot up and over, reach through with your left hand, connect it with your right. This might look and feel entirely different than it did before on the other side. It's okay. There's no rule that says these have to look a specific way or feel a specific way. A spinal twist now. Let the knees come into the chest first. So the knees in nice and grace. And then take them over to the right side of the mat. Sometimes you can open your arms out to a T if you'd like. Other times it might feel better to just let the right hand rest on top of the left knee. back through the center. Pause for a moment in the middle and give yourself another tight squeeze. And when it feels right, let them fall over to the left.
middle. And the legs in for one more hug. If there's any other movement you'd still like to take that I did not offer today, whether you're here in the studio or at home, feel free to do that. Otherwise, you need to work your way onto your back. Legs extend long in front of you. Arms down by your sides. You lift up your head and let the chin tuck into the chest a little bit just to lengthen the back of the neck as you rest the head back down. And before getting too comfortable and sinking into the shape, just take note mentally of what's around you. Maybe the noises that you're hearing. Colors that you may be seeing through your eyelids. And when you're ready, just let that go. Let the breath just flow in and out naturally as it comes. Notice if you're able to be. To be and not do.
moment to extend gratitude to your body for supporting you throughout this class, throughout your practice, throughout your day, throughout your life. And gratitude to your body for sharing its wisdom with you this morning. For showing up today and practicing with me. It is a very big honor for me to be able to guide you through your yoga practice this morning. And peace be with you here and everywhere, today and every day. Namaste. Thank you. Yeah. 